Hello, it is Cass. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel. If you guys are new, I'm really excited because we're about to do a DIY iPhone photo shoot. Those are my favorites, I think, at this point. So the inspiration, the goal behind the shoot, you guys, is to be very fashion oriented. I feel like a lot of my shoots, you know, is fun. It's props. Sometimes it involves music, but this one I want to kind of focus on the outfit. So if you're really shooting like fashion photography, Instagram photography, that's kind of the goal with this shoot. But I'm gonna set up. I'm just gonna use a red backdrop i'll link the information as to where i got it below and then we'll get ready back so as you can see this is the final setup that i decided to go with so i basically plugged my phone into my computer opened the quicktime app so that i could see that onto my screen and then i attached my phone to my movo tripod attachment which is just attached to a regular tripod and i'm using my two newer led light panels at 3200 kelvin on 100 percent and then i just have this red backdrop that i pinned to the wall with clear push pins i think they're called yeah and so basically you guys i angled the photo the camera up a little bit and then as you can see i'm kind of shooting from my hips up for this angle i'll kind of you guys will see me try different angle variations but i really like to have the camera low and pointed up up at me as far as camera settings on the iphone i am using an iphone 11 i'm shooting with the wide wider camera angle so how you can push it and make it wider that's what i'm doing there if you guys don't have that feature i do have a video where i shot with movo lenses and i used a fisheye lens and it gave me a very very similar effect i'll link that video below but as you guys can see i'm just kind of playing around with different scarves and stuff very important on the phone i'm using a 10 second timer in order to shoot myself so i'm just pressing the volume keys in order to set that timer off and i'm actually shooting on the vibrance filter so if you go into your filters that are already on your iphone camera i'm shooting with that first vibrance filter i really like how that looks how it pops in the camera it kind of adds that extra amount of color um that you see in that camera screen there before you even go into editing so that is my setup so just play around you guys different poses iphones really like a lot of light so just make sure you're whole outfit is lit especially with fashion photography make sure you know you have some light on your shoes light on your face etc and stay tuned for the editing tutorial Alright y'all, so I think we got some good stuff. Let's go into editing. Editing time, so I brought my photos into Adobe Lightroom in order to edit them. So I just dragged the two photos that I wanted to edit into the library. I'm going into develop mode, adding the SP05 Nate filter. I'll link that below. It's a free Lightroom LUT. And then from there, I'm just making adjustments. Um, I made the temperature a little bit more cooler. It was a little too orange for me. Turned down the shadows and the blacks because I wanted the black and the darkness of my hair and everything to be darker. Playing around with the vibrance and the saturation. I really want that red to pop. So I'm specifically turning up the saturation of the red, turning down the luminance a little bit, and then changing the hue to more of like, I don't know, like Target lipstick rose kind of red. And then from there, I'm just going back up, playing around a little bit with the tint and the blacks and the shadows. Then I'm gonna press the other image as well, holding shift, and then I can synchronize the same edits onto that image. And if they look good to me, I can go ahead and export. So I'm bringing the photos into Photoshop in order to extend that backdrop. So really simple way that I found, you can take your little lasso tool in Photoshop, just circle around the area that you want to add the backdrop into, go into edit, content aware fill, and then just kind of manipulate what you want it to record. So I just want it to record that red background. So that's why I deleted 
um, myself from the image and then once you click OK it will give you this little effect it is kind of off so what I do after that is I go into my brush effect after opening a new layer and I color match the background and just kind of brush with a really really soft brush like 0% hardness um, but a pretty big brush over that you see I kind of covered myself a little no problem I just go into the eraser again really soft eraser and I just kind of erase over the part that I really really want to show but I do kind of like that spill over and that's how I achieve that effect. I know someone asked me that recently. They're like, how do you get blurry edges? I just paint over it. Um, so for this one, it's a lot more to cover. So I actually selected it and then did free transform, held shift and drag that up to kind of extend the background a little bit. And then from there, I'm doing that same thing. So I'm using my lasso tool to circle around, edit content aware fill, erasing anything that it doesn't need to know for that content aware fill or it might like duplicate my hand somewhere else. So just make sure you only have what it needs to know. Click okay. Content aware fill will appear. I'm just editing or select, deselect, or you can command D, starting a new layer, color matching, and going back into that brush tool. Again, just brushing over the areas and erasing any areas that I don't like. You can change the um you can change the size of your brush, you guys, and just really get it to where you like it. And once you're done, you can just export and that's it.